Welcome to season two of the Let's Talk podcast hosted by Wellhouse Church, where we talk about what it's like to be a Christian Monday through Saturday, to be a person of faith in a culture against faith. So let's talk about whether or not you have to be a pacifist to be a Christian. Okay. Do you think you have to be a pacifist to be a Christian? Uh, mm. Good question. I don't know. Um, I would, I want to say no, but if we are supposed to model Jesus, then yeah, I kind of feel like we have to. Do you think Jesus was a pacifist? Yeah, more than, yeah. Why? Um, because we don't really see him do anything other than really just be peaceful and bring peace. I mean, there is one time he starts flipping over tables and whipping things, but he doesn't, the text does not say he hurt anyone. So yeah, I don't know. It feels very pacifist to me. Do you think Jesus, uh, practiced what he preached? I mean, I hope so. (laughs) Because if Jesus didn't, then yeah, I would hope so. Let me rephrase. Does the story tell you that Jesus practiced what he preached? Yes. Can you give me an example of how Jesus practiced what he preached in regards to possibly being pacifist as you think he might be? Uh, The crucifixion, for one. In what way? Um, The fact that he didn't didn't fight, oh, the garden um, when they came to take him and Peter started fighting. He gets gets mad at Peter. Uh Uh-huh. Says, if you live by, by the sword, sword you, you die, die by, by the sword. sword. Yep. He heals the dude's ear. He does heal the dude's ear. And then lets the trial go non confrontational. Do you remember what happens at the trial? Uh, what are you speaking to? They strike and spit on him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, what does he do? He takes it. He literally turns the other cheek. Mm-hmm. So, do you think Jesus, pre- did the story yes. tell you? Yes. Okay. So, with all of this in mind, do you think Jesus was a pacifist? Yes. If so, where do you think he would tell you to be a pacifist if he was gonna? Is War. there somewhere in his um, teachings that is screaming at you like, yeah, I think this is where Jesus tells me to be a pacifist? Uh, I mean... I- Definitely the turn the other cheek thing. Okay. Um, definitely the turn the other cheek thing. Yeah, I had to think about what your question was, but yeah, definitely. Okay. Now, the next question we would ask is, is there ever a caveat that Jesus offers where it's okay to not be a pacifist? And so to not be a pacifist, sort of, okay. but the temple thing, the turning over tables, the, the misuse of power, um, and well, but remember you said he didn't that, harm the image of God in another right. person. And so you, you said that still makes him a pacifist. So you can't use no, it. No, no, no. I was using that as a not totally but sort of because i don't know how to explain what i'm what i'm trying to say other than that is an example of a time that jesus was not bringing peace he was restoring order oh okay interesting but it still stands true. You cannot harm the image of God. Cannot harm the image of God in another person. Okay. Feel good about your answers? Yes. Okay. So, with all of that in mind, do you think Christians should be pacifists? Yes. Are you one? Yeah, I would think so, yeah. Okay. Well, let's look at some red letter text. Let's look at some words of Jesus. Um, I briefly did this a little bit um, 
in a couple of the episodes I've hinted at this. I did write um, an article on my blog, Faithful Deconstruction. You can find it on my Instagram, which is linked down below if you have Instagram. Um, I did... Um, Excuse me. I did do a, a an article kind of on this, um, a little bit on there, and I may turn this into this week's episode because somebody asked me on Instagram this question. Do you have to be a pacifist in order to be a faithful Christian? Um, cards on the table? I think so. Yeah. I, I, I think, let me, let me say, I think if you're not one, um, you're not giving a, enough weight to some of these passages that Jesus yeah. has to to say, the, like the one we're yeah. about to look at. The, this that is does not mean that it's not it's something that keeps you from eternity, but it is a part of Christian ethic. I would say to be a pacifist. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's a fine way to say that. Okay. Um, this is in Matthew chapter five, Jesus's Sermon on the Mount, one of Jesus's most iconic sermons recorded in 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 the the Gospels. Mm -hmm. It it covers like three chapters. Um, it got a lot of different topics that it hits. Um, it's just a fantastic, it's just a fantastic uh, teaching moment for Jesus in, in the book of Matthew. And um, beginning in verse 38, uh, he says, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. Now, I think I've told you already, I think I told you last week that that quote, You've heard it said an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth comes from Deuteronomy 19.21. Mm. <clears throat> the verse, which in a world without chapter and verse markers, is right before Deuteronomy 20, mm. which opens the conversation about holy war. Mm. And in there, genocide mm. is commanded. Deuteronomy 19.21, and, and keep in mind, Deuteronomy 20 commands genocide yeah, and says that um, Deuteronomy 2014, you may, however, take as your booty the women, the children, livestock, and everything else in the town, but you have to put all the men to the sword right? in the places you don't commit genocide, mm. but there are some places you have to commit genocide. That's, that's Deuteronomy 20. We shouldn't like dismiss that. That's that. Um, Deuteronomy 1921 says, show no pity, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. That could easily fit in Deuteronomy 20. Mm -hmm. That could easily be the opening mm -hmm. part of Deuteronomy 20. Sure. In a, if somebody else was doing chapter and, and verse breaks. <clears throat> I think Jesus knows exactly what he's doing by quoting that. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, a book right there, Richard Hayes, uh, Echoes of Scripture in the Gospels. Nope. Keep going right there. The, the white one right in front of you, Echoes of Scripture in the Gospels. Oh. This book, Richard Hayes made famous um, an idea that he called Echoes, and he started in Paul. Echoes of Scripture in the Letters of Paul. I've got it over there somewhere. Clayton struggles to find the books, though, so uh, we're not going to ask him to. But Echoes of, Echoes of Scripture in the Letters of Paul. Richard Hayes started hearing echoes. He, di he didn't hear full quotations, 
but he heard echoes, like allusions to something that Paul was calling people to a larger narrative. And then he came out with a second book. And Clayton, look at the difference in the sizes of these. Yeah. They're, I mean, vastly more in the echoes yeah. of scripture in the gospels. Echoes of scriptures in the gospels is that same idea that there are times when people are calling to you to remember larger stories based on one echo. Yeah. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But hey, I don't want to talk to you about just that. I want to talk to you about the greater context that this is situated in. I want to talk to you about war. I want to talk to you about enemies. I yeah. want to talk to you about love. I want to talk to you about all these things. Uh, if you'll put that up for me, thank you. And that's why Jesus continues to develop it. He continues to develop. It's not just about retaliation, right? Remember 1921, show no pity, life for life. Yeah. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Do not resist an evildoer. What's resistance, Clayton? In in what in what way? Just in general. What is what is resistance? Resistance is not uh, not giving in, um, not not giving way. Resistance tension. is resistance is someone's attempt to stop unwanted advancement. Sure, advancement in some kind of way, right? Um, to put up resistance is for someone to make a choice to. Try to stop unwanted advancement from someone else or something else. Yeah. Do not resist an evildoer. Yeah. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. Yeah. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give them your cloak as well. Yeah. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, forces you. To go one mile, go the second mile. Yeah. Give to everyone who begs from you. Do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. Does that sound anything like Deuteronomy at all? No. It's like polar opposite, actually. Feels very radical reinterpretation like. Mm -hmm. um, and Jesus has developed it beyond war that, that we are to be. As he says earlier, the Beatitudes, which begin this dang sermon, yeah. don't forget that, blessed are the peacemakers. Yep. This is what the Beatitudes say. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. Uh, as my old professors used to say, this for free. In the Gospel of Matthew, if you're ever reading the Gospel of Matthew, and you see something happen on a mountain, it's important. take note. Everything important happens on a mountain because Matthew's trying to paint Jesus as the new Moses. Mm -hmm. And in Moses' story, everything important happens on a mountain. Yeah. So went up, went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, this is what he says to begin this sermon. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I think that's a call yeah. to pacifism, to life, to peacemaking, to representation. I talked about it. Didn't I, didn't I talk about on here last week? 
I'm sorry, guys. I'm struggling to remember uh, because I've been doing so much conversations around war and stuff on Instagram and thinking and processing. And uh, so I'm struggling to remember all of the content I've given you. Did I do the thing about the blood on the hands with David and, and Solomon? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a problem that God has said, hey, I know I need a house. Yeah. But you can't do it. There's yeah. too much blood on your hands. I got to get away from that. Yeah. I got to be a person of peace. So I'm going to make Solomon a yeah. man of peace and he can build my house. Yep. Blessed are the peacemakers. Turn the other cheek. You've heard it said an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But wait. What about enemies? Yeah. But wait, what about those situations like in the temple, this righteous indignation that I have? Mm -hmm. What about my enemies? What about those who oppress people like they did in the temple? Those people are my enemies. Oh, let's keep reading. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Literally, a single sermon. No, no subheadings. No, no verses. No chapter marks. The very next word out of Jesus' mouth. You have heard that it was said... You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Clayton? Yes. Do you know where that comes from? I do not. Let's look this up. This is, this is how easy it is to look things up because I don't remember. Uh, I'm just Googling. Where does the Bible say um, love your neighbor and hate your enemy? enemies it's going to bring up matthew 5 43 and the first thing that pops up you just go matthew 5 43 what is matthew 5 43 quoting mm hmm and you go down to one of these, any of them, that has cross-references. Oh, it's Leviticus 19. Interesting. Do you know what is quoted in Leviticus 19, Clayton? No. All kinds of things. Specifically, there's a lot of sexual things quoted in oh. Leviticus 19. Which, remember, Clayton, who are some of the most hated people by the Israelites... Hated by the Israelites? Mm -hmm. The Moabites. Uh -huh. Why are they hated? Number one, because they got a long history of conflict. Yeah. But because the Moabites are birthed from Moab, mm -hmm. who is the product of Lot's incestual relationship with his daughter. Right. They do not like sexual infidelity, which is very weird because they got a ton of it in their kingly history, but to each their own. Um, yes, Leviticus 19 is a ritual and moral holiness code yeah. um, that goes through all kinds of things that talk about how you offer sacrifices and harvest and don't steal and don't defraud your neighbor, uh, don't render unjust judgment, don't have hate in your heart. Mm -hmm. um, even Verse 20, if a man has sexual yeah. relations... There's all kinds of things in here. Mm -hmm. And so in here, this is a quotation from Leviticus 19, 18, this, where he says, you've heard it say, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. You should, this one says in this translation, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So they're translating a little bit differently, but there's plenty of opportunity in here to say, it's okay to hate your enemy. Right? You can even get that from Deuteronomy 20. Yeah. It literally calls them enemy and tells them to commit genocide against them. Yeah. It's not hard to get that in this quotation. So Jesus says, you've heard that it was said, shall love your enemy and hate your enemy, or love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Yeah. So that you may... Be children of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. 
And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, what has Jesus done, Clayton? He has de- he has described an ideal society. Yeah. An ideal society, an ideal Christian society, is one given over to pacifism. Thanks for listening to the Let's Talk podcast hosted by Wellhouse Church. Be sure to give us a rating and a review if you enjoyed the episode. It's free and it helps us immensely. Also, feel free to check out our other podcasts.